1 comma 3 is there, 3 comma 9 is there. 1 comma 9 does not belong to R. 1 comma 9 is not in the relation, not in the set R. So therefore R is not a transitive. So N of C intersection, you have number of students who play both cricket as well as football is 5 is the required amount. If all the entries, all the truth values of 5th and 8th column are same, then only they are logically equivalent. Since for the given problem, they are not logically Hello dear students, welcome to this session of discrete mathematics class. Now in previous class we have discussed regarding the part A of the question paper. Now in this session I am going to discuss regarding the part B of the model paper. So let us come to part B. So in part B answer the following questions. There are three questions. Each question carries 15 marks followed by sub questions. So 15 marks each question carries either two parts in part A, either it may be for 7 or 8 marks, another one is for 7 or 8 marks. So totally 7 plus 8 or 8 plus 7, you will get 15 marks from each part followed by there is an optional choice. Right, now let us come to the first problem, 6 problem A. What is problem A? Let R is the relation on the set A is 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. 14. Defined by R is equal to x comma y such that 3x minus y is equal to 0. Verify R is reflexive comma symmetric and transitive or not. We have to verify whether the given relation R is equal to x comma y such that 3x minus y is equal to 0 is reflexive, symmetric and transitive. Hence, find the range and the domain for the given function. Now, what is given here? Let us come to the answer. Let what is given? A is equal to the set which contains 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. up to 14 and the relation R is defined by x comma y is equal to x comma y such that 3x minus y is equal to 0. This is the relation. Now let us find out the elements of the relation R first. What is given here? 3x minus y is equal to 0 means y is equal to 3x. So that means first element is x and the second element is 3x. That's all. So therefore the relation R is equal to x is equal to 1, 3 into 1 is 3, 1 comma 3. When x is equal to 2, y is equal to 3 into 2 is 6. When x is equal to 3, 3 into 3 is equal to 9. x is equal to 4, 3 fours are 12. When x is equal to 5, 5 threes are 15, but 15 does not belong to the set A. Therefore, we cannot take the elements of the relation R is equal to 1 comma 3, 2 comma 6, 3 comma 9 and 4 comma 12. So if you apply this condition, see here, this condition will be satisfied for 1 comma 3, 3 into 1 minus 3 that is equal to 0. So therefore, just consider x and 3x, that's all. Multiples of 3x, if x is equal to 1, then y is equal to 3 into x is 3 into 1 is 3. When x is equal to 2, 3 into 2 is equal to 6. When x is equal to 3, 3 into 3 is 9. When x is 4, 3 into 4 is equal to 2. So therefore, the set R contains 1 comma 3, 2 comma 6, 3 comma 9 and 4 comma 12. Now verify, what is to verify whether it is reflexive, symmetric and transitive first. Reflexive, let us come to the first one, reflexive. Reflexive property, what is reflexive property? For all A, for all A belongs to the set capital A. If A comma A belongs to R, if A comma A belongs to R, then it is reflexive. Let us see here 1 comma 1, 2 comma 2, 3 comma 3, 4 comma 3, 14 comma 14 does not belong to the set R since 1 comma 1 or 2 comma 2 does not belong to R. So what do you say? Therefore, R is not reflexive. Therefore, R is not reflexive. This is not reflexive. So reflexive property is not satisfied. Now let us come to the second property, symmetric. Symmetric property. What is symmetric? For all, A comma B belongs to the set A. If A comma B belongs to R, implies B comma A also belongs to R, then R is called a symmetric. Now let us consider 2 comma 3, 2 comma 6, sorry, 2 comma 6 belongs to R, implies 6 comma 2 does not belong to R. 6 comma 2 is not in the set, in the relation 1 comma 3 is there but 3 comma 1 is not there. Similarly, 3 comma 9 belongs to R but 9 comma 3 does not belong to R. 4 comma 12 is there, 12 comma 4 does not belong to R. That means 
A comma B belongs to R, but B comma A does not belong to R. Therefore, R is not uh, symmetric. This is not symmetric. This is not symmetric. Now, let us come to the third one. Reflexive symmetric third property is the transitive. Transitive relation. What is transitive? A, for all A, B, C belongs to, for all A comma B comma C belongs to the set A. If A comma B belongs to R and B comma C belongs to R, implies A comma C also belongs to R. A comma C also belongs to R. If this property is satisfied, then it is called a transitive. Let us take one, one comma three. One comma three belongs to R and three comma nine also belongs to R. See, one comma three belongs to R and three comma nine belongs to R, which implies three comma yes, three comma yes. 3, 3 gets cancelled. 1 comma 9, 1 comma 9 does not belong to R. See, 1 comma 3 is there, 3 comma 9 is there. 1 comma 9 does not belong to R. 1 comma 9 is not in the relation, not in the set R. So, therefore, R is not uh, transitive. Therefore, R is not transitive. R is not transitive. What do you say? Therefore, the relation R is not reflexive, neither reflexive nor symmetric nor transitive. This is neither reflexive nor symmetric nor a transitive. Now, this is regarding the properties. Now, last, what is they have asked? Hence, find the range and domain of R. Range and domain. Range and domain of R. Range and domain of R. Range is nothing but range of R is equal to range of R is range and the domain. So, the set of all second elements is called the range here. The second elements 3, 6, 9, 3, comma, 6, comma, 9, comma, 12. This is called the range. And the domain, what is the domain of R? Domain of R is nothing but the set of all first elements of the relation. Set of all first elements 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. These are the domain. So the domain is 1, comma, 2, comma, 3, comma, 4. Is the domain. And the range R is equal to set of all second elements 3, 6, 9, 12. So, domain is the set of all first elements of the relation, whereas range is the set of all second elements of the relation. So, here 1, 2, 3, 4 are the domain, whereas 3, 6, 9, 12 are the range. That's it. Okay. So, this is how we are going to verify the first problem. So, this carries 8 marks. This is an 8 marks question. So, if you do this much, you will get. 8 marks. Hope you followed. Okay. Let us come to the next problem. What is the next problem? In a class of 35 students, 25 likes to play cricket and 16 likes to play football. Also, each also each students like to play at least one of the two games. How many two students like to play both cricket and uh, football? So here, in a class of uh, how many students are there? 35 students are there. 24 likes to play cricket and 16 likes to play football. Let us represent the number of students who play cricket as C. C represents the number of students who will play cricket and uh, number of students who play football. Football is F. N of F will represent number of students who play football. So, there are 35 students means that is nothing but union. So, let us write down what are the conditions given. Union is given. Number of students who play cricket is given. Number of students who play football is given. What is required to find is how many students like to play both cricket and uh, football. That's it. Okay. Now let us come to the solution here. What is given? Given. So number of students who play cricket union football is equal to 35. That is given. Number of students who play cricket. Number of students who play cricket will be 24. And the number of students who play football number of students who play football is equal to 16 and n of number of students who play cricket and football is the question mark that's it okay just using this formula we know that n of c union f is equal to n of c plus n of f minus n of c intersection f what is n of c union f that's equal to 35 is equal to n of c 24 n of f is 16 minus n of c intersection f. So, 35 is equal to 24 plus 16. 24 plus 16 is nothing but 40 minus n of c intersection f. Now, transfer this. So, n of c intersection f is equal to 
40 minus 35 that's equal to 5. So therefore, the number of students who play both, the number of students who play cricket as well as the football is equal to 5, that's it. So the required answer is 5, that's it, very simple. Number of students who play both cricket and football is N of C union F is 35, N of C number of students who play cricket is 24, football is 16. What is required to find is both N of C intersection F. So here N of C intersection F is equal to N of C plus N of F minus N of C intersection F. 35 is equal to 24 plus 16 minus N of C intersection F. 24 plus 16 is 40. 35 is equal to 40 minus N intersection F. So, N of intersection F is required to be determined. So, therefore, transfer this plus 35 to right hand side, 40 minus 35 is 5. So, N of C intersection F, number of students who play both cricket as well as football is 5 is the required answer. That's it. Hope you follow. This is for a 7 more. So, you may expect, you may get this type of problem for a 7 more. The previous one is 8. 8 plus 7 is 15. Okay. Now, for this, there is a choice. You can go for the choice. R, this is R question, R or R, A and B, there are two questions, A and B. So, verify for any three proposition P, Q, R, P conditional to Q conjunction R is logically equivalent to P conditional to Q conjunction P conditional to R. So, we have to verify whether this is logically equivalent or not. Now, let us come to this problem. So, to verify whether this is logically equivalent or not, what is the given problem given? So, I will go to the next page. P conditional to Q given P conditional to Q conjunction R, Q conjunction R is logically equivalent to, logically equivalent to P conditional Q, P conditional to Q and conjunction Q conditional to R. Now, we have to verify whether this is logically equivalent or not. Now, let us write down the elements of this P, Q and R for three proposition P, Q, R. Now, just write down Q conjunction R first, Q conjunction R, then P conditional to Q conjunction R. This is the first part. And the second part, P conditional to Q and Q conditional to R, then P conditional to P conditional to Q conjunction Q conditional to R. This is how we are going to split. Okay. Now, let us write down the elements. As you know, the elements of uh, P are nothing but true, 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 four true, remaining four false, 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 false and false. First true, 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 false, false. First since it contains P, Q, R as the proposition, three, so far uh, three propositions, two into two into two, two to the four to the eight. So, P contains true, 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 false, false, false. So, 4 true, 4 false. Next, Q contains T, T, 2 true and true false. Alternative, T, T and true false. So, T, T, F, F, T, T, F, F. So, T, T, F, F, T, T, F, F. So, and whereas for R, alternative true and false. True, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. In each cases, there are 8 elements. Now, Q conjunction R first, conjunction between these two, right. Now, as you know, conjunction true and true is true, remaining cases it is false. So, true and true is true, true, yes, true and true, Q and R. For these two, we are going to write the conjunction. Remember, conjunction means true and true is true, remaining are all false. True and false is false, false and true is also false, false and false is also false, true and true is true, true and false is false, false and true is false, and false and false is false. So, True and true is true, true and true is true, remaining all cases it is false. Next, P conditional to Q conjunction R. So, the conditional for these two, P conditional to Q conjunction R, right. Now, you know for conditional true and false is false, in all remaining cases it is true. So, let us write the conditional statement for P and Q conjunction R. So, for conditional true and false is false, in all the cases it is true. Now, true and true is true. Next, true and false it is false, true and false also it is false, again true and false is also it is false. Next, true and true is true, true and false is false, true and false is false, true and false is also false, false and true, false and true is true, again false and false is also true, false and false is also true, false and false is also true. 
So T, F, 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 T, 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 you will get. Now, in the second part, first write out the conditional for a P conditional to Q. The conditional for these two. Conditional, as you know, true and false is false. All cases are true. So, true and true is true. True and true is true. True and false is false. Again, true and false is false. Again, false and true is true. False and true is true. False and false is also true. False and false is also true. After writing P conditional to Q, let us come to Q conditional to R. Q and R, the conditional for this two. True and true is true. Right. True and false is false. Again, false and false is true. Again, Q and R we are writing. False and true is true. Again, false and false is also true. Then, true and true is true. Then, again, true and false is false. Again, false and false, false and false, it is true and true. Right. This is the conditional statement for P, Q and R. So, let us write down the conjunction for these two. So, true and true is true. True and false is false. Again, false and true is also false. False and true is also false. True and true is true. True and false is false. True and true is true. And true and true is true. So, see here. Now, let us uh, write down this 1, 2, 3rd column, 4th, 5th column. This is 6th column. 7th and 8th column. Now, just check, verify the truth values of 5th and 8th column. So, T and T, F and F, F and F, F and F, T and T, this is T, that is F, T, T, T. So, they are not equals. Here it is F, here we have, we have T. Suppose if it is equal to T, then they are logically equivalent. Since all the entries in 5th and 8th column are not equal, since 5th and 8th column truth values are not equal, not equal. So, therefore, they are not logically equivalent. So, therefore, we can say that they are not logically equivalent. So, if all the entries, all the truth values of 5th and 8th column are same, then only they are logically equivalent. Since for the given problem, they are not logically equivalent. So, if you do this much, definitely you will get a 8 marks. Now, let us come to the next problem in the same concept. Now, verify whether any proposition for any proposition P and Q, the compound proposition P conditional to P disjunction Q is a tautology and the compound proposition P conjunction Negation of P conjunction Q is a contradiction. So, this is also a very important problem for uh, 7 marks. Now, let us verify this part. P conditional to P disjunction Q is a tautology or not. First, let us come to P conditional to P disjunction Q. Now, P, Q, P disjunction Q and P conditional to P disjunction Q. Now, so here, you know the elements are the truth values for P is true and true, F and F. This is alternative true, false, true, false. Now, for disjunction, false and false is false in all cases, it is true. So, true and true is true, true and false is true, false and true is also true, except F and F, F and F is F. Now, conditional for these two, the conditional statement for P conditional to P disjunction, Q. So, conditional statement is true and false is false. In all cases, it is true. True and true is true. True and true is also true. False and true is also true. False and false is also true. So, all the truth values in the last column are true. So, therefore, this is a tautology. So, therefore, since all the entries are true, all the truth values, since all the truth values in the last column are true, therefore, P conditional to P disjunction Q is a tautology. This is a tautology. Right. Now, let us come to the second part of the problem. What is the second part? To prove that P conjunction, negation of P conjunction Q is a contradiction. Let us come to the second part. P conjunction, negation of P conjunction Q. Negation of P conjunction Q. So, P, Q, then negation of P, then this part, 
negation P conjunction Q, then P conjunction, negation of P conjunction Q. Okay. Now write down the elements. So this is true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false. For negation of P, negation of P, for true it is false, for true it is false, for false it is true, for false it is true. Now conjunction of negation P and Q, for these two write down the conjunction. Conjunction true and true is true in all cases it is false. So false and true is false, false and false is false, true and true is true, true and false is also false. Now again conjunction for these two, conjunction for uh, these two, P conjunction. Negation of P conjunction, negation of Q. Conjunction means again true and true is true in all cases it is false. So true and false is false, true and false is false, false and true is false, false and false is false. What do you say in the last column all the truth values are F, 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 F. That means therefore this is a contradiction. See here all the truth values are F and F. So therefore you can write P conjunction, negation of P conjunction Q is a contradiction. This is a contradiction. So the first one is a tautology and the second one is a contradiction. That's it. If you do this much, definitely you will get 4 plus 4, 8 marks or 7 marks or sometimes 3 plus 3, 6 marks. This is how we are going to verify the given compound proposition is whether tautology or a contradiction and the previous one is the logically equivalence or not. That is all regarding uh, this session. Let us take uh, the different problems in the next session. Thank you. Thank you very much.